mirror, mirror on the wall. Am I the fattest one of all? This replies saying, from the from Fatty McBlog, a blog site where girls can express their feelings on their weight, explains how obesity has affected the way people think about themselves on a daily basis. Obesity has often been debated on whether or not it is a disease. Sure, people's eating habits are out of choice and habit, but when they are born into an obese family, is it really their fault? Google defines obesity as a term used to describe body weight that is much greater than what is considered healthy. Do you know a person who is overweight? Do you, do you have people in your family who might be considered obese? Think about it. One out of five people in the United States is overweight, according to Procon.org. So it wouldn't be uncommon for obesity to hit home. Maybe you have busy parents who have more time to buy fast food through a drive-in rather than cook a well-balanced meal. Or perhaps you constantly watch television and buy into that fast food nonsense. Either way, fast food has grasped its greasy hand into you and is refusing to let go. I propose that the federal government should force fast food restaurants to serve healthier options before things get out of hand. Because fast food sells fatty foods, uses preservatives, and targets younger audiences, America is at its fattest weight and still gaining. Certainly, you can expect there to be many fast food chains in Pennsylvania, ranging from the head of the fast food franchise like McDonald's and Wendy's, all the way through newcomers like Great Burger and Chick-fil-A. But all across America, there are around 160,000 fast food chains, which serve 50 million people a day and make 65 billion annually, says numberup.net. Now, McDonald's is certainly the front runner for the fast food franchise. Not only that, but they also lead in the unhealthy foods as well. In fact, their website gives all the nutritional information. McDonald's.com states that their Big Mac contains 540 calories and 1,040 milligrams of sodium. BurgerKing.com also has valuable nutritional information. Burger King's Whopper has 670 calories and 980 milligrams of sodium. Way too high to be considered edible. According to Procon.org, obesity has jumped from the third highest risk factor to the second, directly behind tobacco. While some people argue that obesity is a lifestyle choice and is purely the customer's fault, naturally, I disagree. While the customers do have a say in what they eat, they usually do not have much to choose from that is healthy. Most of the food is fried and, oil, and placed in oils. This not only leads to high cholesterol, um, but um, it also can lead to heart attacks, strokes, and death. In their defense, when customers are usually used to eating fatty foods, they are more likely to continue this habit rather than getting healthier. Granted, not all fast food is bad, but then again, not all fast food comes from a single source. While fast food franchises claim that their food is fresh and natural, most of the time they're lying. One hamburger can have up to 10 different cow strips. Instead of being peeled in the back like the good old days, french fries are produced and frozen in factories. Um, to top it off, Chicken nuggets have chicken flavor added to them because they lose so much flavor from being processed. Do any of these things sound appetizing? Even though they may taste good, it's when you logically think about what you're eating that turns us off. At least for me, when I saw the documentary Super Size Me in sixth grade, that immediately opened my eyes to what fast food is really like. Um, most of the people who went to Sandy Run Middle School we're all forced to watch this documentary of a man named Morgan Spurlock who ate McDonald's products every single day, every single meal, for 30 days. He wasn't allowed to ask for supersized items, but when he was asked, he had to supersize them. He was asked nine times. Not only does he gain weight rapidly, but the once healthy man transforms into a mood-swinging, dysfunctional man with a 230 cholesterol level and a 13% increase in body mass. 
It took him 14 months to lose all the weight gained during his experiment, according to his website, morganspurlock.com. Again, disagreeing arguments claim that what you get for that you, you get what you pay for and should expect fatty foods in return. But why does oily food have to be the only thing on the menu? Shouldn't nutritional foods be included? Um, as they are recommended for two to three servings a day? Alas, the government sees fit that because obesity is not a disease, it requires no immediate attention or resolve. All the while, people are gaining weight like crazy, spurring an epidemic that could have only been caused because of America's rushed speeds to get everything that would normally take at least three days to do fit into just one. Generally speaking, most obese parents have overweight kids who, in turn, grow up and have their own obese children. This cycle seems never ending. But famous actress Michelle Obama has a plan. She not only wants to end obesity, but she hopes to do it in the next generation. While she might have difficulty with the latter, her idea is pure and simple. It starts with a problem. Why are one-third of American children obese? I recently asked some of my peers to take a survey and the results were astonishing. About 50% of them liked going to fast food restaurants. 50% of them said that they go every week, every other week. 100% of them said that they know someone who is obese. And 75% said that they have a family member who is obese. While teenagers may like eating fried food and stuffing their faces, it ultimately becomes a bad habit. Now, busy parents might be the first to blame. But let's not forget that the screens are what is keeping kids indoors and snack hungry. Food companies spend billions a year, every year trying to sell their products to children, says an article in the Philadelphia Inquirer. By having these commercials air all day, it allows for the young child to fantasize themselves eating what is being offered to them at a moderately low price. At this rate, most heavy children will die younger than their parents. In a study, federal health officials figured out the body mass index, or BMI, for over 8,000 children and adolescents. The BMI is a simple calculation of weight to height. It produces a number that rates individuals as normal height, or normal weight, overweight, and obese. The study found that 32% of children and teens are still at risk for diabetes, high blood pressure, and all the other issues related to obesity, says study co-author Dr. Reginald Wa Wa Washington, a pediatric card card cardiologist um, at the Rocky Mountain Hospital for Children in Denver. And while childhood obesity is a touchy subject, it is one that needs to be addressed. Young people are what drive this country. But by having these overweight people die young, it only hurts our country. While you can't just go from epidemic obesity to epidemic leanness, there is still inspiration to make a change. You want to do something about it? Um, send a protest letter to your local fast food restaurant, like McDonald's. Or if you're feeling really ambitious, go straight to the source, the White House. Um, all of you can contribute to ending obesity. Since most of you will be parents one day, don't let this fast food epidemic hit home. Beat the odds and take action. Undoubtedly, fast food and obesity are always going to be intertwined with one another. Only in our dreams and imaginations can obesity be vanquished and the world free of its unforgiving nature. However, this is not dreamland, nor will it ever be. You may say to yourself, how does this topic concern me? Or how is it more important than cancer or AIDS? Maybe it isn't. But in the eyes of those who come by it, it's the world to them. Because fast food is greasy, preservatives are added, and children grow up to be obese parents, America is seeing its fattest days. The only way to help someone is to first help yourself. The only way to see changes is to make them. And the only way for people to gather together is to give them a cause worth fighting for. Is making the government force fast food restaurants to serve healthier foods worth fighting for? I think so. Thank you.